But first, religious groups are hitting back against the Australian Law Reform Commission's recommendations, which could see faith-based schools lose the right to hire teachers who share their beliefs. Last week, the Commission released a report recommending that Section 38 of the Sex Discrimination Act should be abolished. This is the section which contains exemptions allowing religious schools to hire teachers on faith grounds. Today, the Sydney Catholic Archbishop has written a powerful piece for The Australian, warning these so-called reforms would undermine the freedom of parents and religious groups to provide faith-based education and called on leaders to reject the report. I'm pleased to say Archbishop Anthony Fisher joins me now. Well, you wrote today in The Australian that religious freedom... Um, Archbishop Fisher, in Australia is being reduced slice by slice. Do you feel that this decision by the Law Reform Commission is part of a larger and broader trend? I think there is a bigger trend. I think you've, we've seen a series of cases where an archbishop was dragged before a tribunal for, for teaching what his church teaches about marriage, where another a guy lost his job as a leader of a bank because of the church he belonged to a uh, woman that, that lost her job because she said on the social media that uh, for religious reasons she didn't support same-sex marriage. So it's happening out there in the workplace, uh, in the community. We've had pressures from governments to implement some radical sexuality and gender programs in some states, uh, on hospitals to provide abortions, even if they're church hospitals or euthanasia. And now there's this trend in government reports now, the Law Reform Commission, one, is obviously hostile to faith schools, but it's not alone. We had one from the Productivity Commission recently, uh, which was against people who make donations to church building, school building funds, uh, having tax deductibility. We had an ACT parliamentary report uh, criticising Calvary Hospital for its religious ethos just before they then took over the hospital. So, so we're happy with this is part of a, a broader trend. And I think if you look at these government reports, like the one now from the Law Reform Commission, they're often based on a very narrow range of advisors. Uh, there's very little transparency as to, as to what they're thinking or where they're going. And then there's sweeping recommendations at the end. Unhelpful. We ones. know that parents don't support a lot of these reforms. I mean, a survey has just revealed that the majority of private school parents, they want religious schools to retain the rights they have to hire teachers who share their values. I mean, this is why parents often work a couple of jobs to be able to afford a, a non-government school education. Surely this is also about parental choice. Absolutely it is. And I hope that government will listen to that, listen to the parents who are, after all, uh, many of them, their electors. Uh, it's important also, I think, for the parents to speak out, not only in surveys, but to be talking to their GP, their, their MPs, to be uh, letting them know they value having the option of a religious schooling. Uh, and we know parents are voting with their feet for church schools, that the enrolments are going up and up in the church schools. So it's clearly something they want. They want that choice. And I hope our leaders can hear that. I, I get dismayed when I, when I read and listen to how some of these faith-based schools are portrayed as cruel and callous. Um, put my hand up to say I went to Catholic schools and I've seen uh, gay kids, gay students in Catholic schools uh, supported in a pastoral way. I've seen transgender kids in Catholic schools supported in a really pastoral way. This is about, though, the school having the choice about what those parameters, are, I assume, might be, and the school being allowed, though, to still, within that pastoral care, teach its faith. If this got up, what would it practically do to faith-based schools and their autonomy? Well, I think the biggest impact will be on our students. Uh, now, I meet students in our Catholic schools where the schools made a huge difference to them. And it might not have been the religion class or the religion teacher. It might have been a maths teacher or a music teacher or someone in the office. But someone has inspired them in faith and morals. And if we're not able to choose the kinds of, of staff that do that, it's the kids that lose out in the end. And now we've long dealt compassionately with staff and students of all sorts of situations with good pastoral care, with individual attention to them, and we'll continue to do that. 
but we don't want to be distracted by endless lawfare from people that want to engage in some kind of activist uh, program in our schools. Uh, we don't want to be afraid to have the sensitive conversations or to be always looking over our shoulder uh, at, at the lawyers are coming or the tribunals are coming. Uh, we want to keep doing what we've done so well for more than 200 years now in Australia, and that's providing the best education we can within our spiritual tradition without fear of being interfered with. Do you feel after that Calvary Hospital decision, and it's a Catholic hospital for those outside of Canberra, after it was expropriated by the ACT government, do you feel that that example creates a precedent for some left-wing governments, add to this uh, debate now about schools? Do you feel like there's this uh, not-so-hidden agenda, particularly in relation to the Christian faith? Look, it, it is worrying that any of our government, state or territory uh, could think they'll, they'd pick on a religious a ch a church or a hospital or a school or an aged care facility and decide to close it or, in this case, expropriate it, make it a, a, a state hospital. Mm. Uh, and that, that is a very bad precedent. It's the kind of thing you expect to happen in, in North Korea or Cuba or somewhere, not in Australia today. Uh, and when a thing like that happens, you'd hope that, that, that governments, including, for instance, when that happened in the ACT, the Commonwealth government, would, would stand up for the good that religion does in our community and stand up for believers. Uh, but the fact is people of faith and their institutions make an enormous contribution to education and health care and welfare and aged care in this country, and that gets lost in these activist controversies and when these government departments or, or radical governments decide that they're going to try and push uh, believers out of service provision. We all lose out. And just quickly, Archbishop, have you seen the draft legislation? I understand only the opposition's had a briefing. It's still being held back by the government. Have you, have, have you had that consultation? So, no, I, I haven't seen it. I've, I've had discussions with various uh, political leaders on, on all sides, but we haven't seen the legislation yet. Archbishop Fisher, thank you for your time.